so the so now if we change direction from Fifi in a sense, um, because uh, Kevin um, is a colleague who I met in 2011 uh, at the IB um, regional conference in The Hague. I was doing um, a presentation on uh, knowing, so so students knowing stuff through research. Uh, and Kevin attended my talk, and I attended uh, not a talk that Kevin did, but a, a talk about um, curriculum mapping using software that Kevin developed. Um, so again, one of the criticisms of inquiry-based learning is, uh, you know, all, there's this um, division between knowledge and skills. Um, and what Kevin had done was to develop software that enabled us to map the taught content. So what are students, what content are students learning in, in different subjects at different times? Um, but then that software allowed us to map against the content against certain things. And in our case, particularly skills. So one of the things that Kevin and I collaborated on was um, connecting the support content to the stages of the inquiry process and then mapping that down to this underlying framework of skills, because then um, we're able to work either from the skills up to the content where it's taught, or we can work from the content down to which skills are being taught and developed in that content. Um, and we've become, I'd like to take the liberty of saying good friends, Kevin. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'd, 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 I'd like to think that over the years, um, that relationship has, has changed from, from maybe, um, uh, maybe potentially uh, a client-based mm -hmm. relationship um, to uh, a, a collaboration that is, is, is built on friendship um, and a shared vision um, for enabling children to learn and for teachers to uh, enable that learning more effectively. Um, so without any further ado, I will hand over to Kevin. Um, is there anything I need to do? Yeah. And then, are you going to share? Okay, yeah, I will do, yeah. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Yeah. Right, okay. So hello everyone. Um, sorry I can't be with you, but thank you very much for the invitation and it's, uh, it's great to be with you uh, virtually, if not in, in person. Um, so, and thank you for that introduction, Darrell. I'm just going to share my um, screen. Okay, okay so if, if Darrell or Jenny could let me know if you can't see my screen, that would be great. No, we can see you. Fantastic. Okay, great so, stuff. So like younger in your picture. Sorry? You seem a lot younger in your picture. Yes, I've aged a lot since I was taken. So, uh, yes, so uh, I'm, I'm Kevin. I'm a dynamic curriculum advisor. And what that means is I've worked with lots of schools to try to help them um, develop their curriculum and solve problems around um, why they need to develop the curriculum in different directions. And um, that, uh, along the way, um, I've picked up a few things uh, that I've learned about myself. Obviously, I've just learned that um, I've obviously aged quite quite drastically from when that last photo was taken. <laughs> um, but um, I love, I, I'm really interested, I'm an ideas person, um, hopefully creating good ideas, but I like other people's ideas as well. That's one of the things that, that has helped made it easy for me to collaborate with Daryl because I think he comes up with great ideas as well, and, and, and Jenny too. Um, I like trying to solve problems. Um, and um, I like learning. I think that perhaps is the thing uh, right from the start of my collaboration with, with Daryl. Um, I could see he had a passion for learning, both helping other people learn and learning himself. And the one thing that's consistent through all my work is I learn from the people I work with, hopefully. Um, so, so learning and um, I've always been interested in personal development. Um, so you could say that the personal development has meant I've had to try and solve some problems because I've learned I've uh, some ideas on that good. But um, at the same time, I'm, I also think of myself as a contrarian, which means I, I like to think I come from things, come at things from a different perspective. And 
um, once upon a time, I did this exercise, and you might have done something similar, where you kind of have a go through a process to work out what your what what's on your lifestone. If you imagine this kind, of, what's at the heart of, of of who you are? And I'm really, I was quite, I'm quite happy with mine. I came up with something which was quite short, and um, it's consistently kind of um, made sense to me. Um, and so my my lifestone says I want to appreciate life, and it's a it's a it's a kind of you know it's a maths equation in a way plus make it better. So um, so that's me, and I'll I'll. Exp- I'll come to why I'm going into all this, this detail a little bit later. Um, so um, when I first met Daryl, as Daryl just mentioned, he was doing a presentation, he was asked to do a presentation on the um, extended essay, I think, in, in The Hague um, uh, for the International Baccalaureate. And um, it was really interesting. It was a really interesting um, presentation. And um, that led to us looking at um, the challenges he was facing in the school. And that, that really led to... Um, uh, understanding about fossil for the first time, that skills framework that I'm sure you're all very familiar with, uh, and the challenge of how can we um, map this in a curriculum. And I'd worked with some other schools and created, uh, helped create something called the Monitoring Wall, which is some software that helps schools um, uh, develop their curriculum. Um, and, and it was it was it was a really fascinating time. We we found a way to load up a full skills framework like the fossil skills framework and make that. Um, something that can be used to, to map a school's curriculum. But over time, I saw a journey uh, unfold um, um, with, uh, with Daryl and Jenny at Oakham School and, and, and ultimately beyond. Um, and, and that was a transition from, so you start off from thinking, okay, what, do I, what skills do our learners need? And you need a sort of framework of skills that's comprehensive and that's where Fossil comes in. And then, um, and then it kind of developed into a process. So um, the, um, in, in Fossil, we've got the Fossil Cycle, um, in, the, um, in other uh, frameworks, you might have other kind of cycles, but it kind of needs to go from the skills to a process where that helps you make sense of those things. Um, and then eventually it became a stance. So it, it needed to say, well, actually, we think inquiry-based learning is at the heart of all learning. Um, and that's when things started to, to, to become wider than that. And I saw Daryl's influence start to, and it, so I'm connecting to, to, to leaders around the world um, in inquiry-based learning. Um, and, and fossil um, the kind of organization um, became real. And that was an exciting to see um, that kind of progress. But a stance is also something that a school needs to take to make an inquiry-based learning um, at the heart of the school. And then um, more recently, the next stage is perhaps the most exciting for me is, is to go, is the kind of heroic learner stage, looking at it or bringing it all back down to the, to the inquirers. It's it, it perhaps better described as a kind of cycle because you kind of start with the inquirers or what skills do they need? So it's been quite a big journey. I, I think this journey is something that I've kind of shadowed. I've kind of followed, you know, a little bit behind them, trying to catch up and trying to see if, see if I can contribute in any way. Um, but I think sometimes maybe schools need to go through this process. Maybe uh, learners need to go through, uh, you know, educators need to go through this process to really fully appreciate and understand um, the full power and, and, and potential um, for this. But I've, I've thought a little bit about what challenges inquiry based learning and this process, this journey that, that schools perhaps need to go on um, brings along the way. So from a point of view of mapping the, the curriculum. So um, when it comes to skills, um, the first thing is that um, you actually need to have a, a, a map of your curriculum in order to do the mapping of where the skills fit onto that. So I, I, often I'm, I'm kind of asked, well, how do, I, how do I put this subject on the map? How do I put this concept on the map? And the, the, the first part of the answer is always, well, do you have a map? And a lot of schools don't have a map, so they can't put something on the map. Um, and, and that's made even more challenging if the thing you're trying to put on the map is quite a complicated framework. So um, the fossil skills framework is, is big and very comprehensive, but that means it's complex and quite daunting if you try to map that in one big go. So they're, they're, they're common kind of challenges uh, at the skills stage of your journey. When it comes to the process um, stage, then you're looking at a kind of pedagogical challenge. You you need to engage the thoughtfulness of teachers in order to possibly adjust their um, their teaching plans or to tease out of their teaching um, the bits that allow them to describe, you know, to fit into the process. Um, and something that that uh, uh, Barbara said that I thought was really interesting is is you need to need to avoid making every unit within your curriculum a kind of inquiry project, a mini EPQ, I suppose. You, um, really interesting 
looking at all the detail you need to go to in those kind of um, projects. And it's not realistic to completely change the whole curriculum. And you wouldn't want to completely change every part of the curriculum to an inquiry project. So, you, so there, there's some challenges there. And then when it comes to the to having to take a, to, you know, taking inquiry as a, as a stance, you're, you're engaging with the mission and values of a school. So you need um, leadership, buy-in and support. Um, uh, and, and, and it's helpful if you've got support from a wider community, which is something that's so fantastic about Fossil and, um, and, and uh, IFLO and other organizations where inquiry is, is, is something that's bringing people together. Uh, and then finally, when it comes to inquirers, um, I think it's nice to think of the idea of um, defining success of curriculum, of mapping inquiry across your curriculum in terms of learner impact. Um, and as you just saw from what Jenny was saying, um, pupils need a lot of support um, to become the heroic learners, have the full depth of, um, uh, of inquiry skills. Um, and I think in order for that to happen, teachers need to be inquirers because um, it's very hard to teach something if you can't do it yourself. Um, and so we need ways to kind of assess strengths and weaknesses of individual pupils um, and maybe across the school. Again, Jenny kind of touched on some of those, 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 those challenges in the uh, previous uh, um, presentation. Um, and I think it's really great to have ways to celebrate and showcase successes as well, and that's a challenge. Um, but often projects um, can be a fantastic way to do that. But it's also something that, that once you've got the cultural change, capturing those stories and making sure everybody can see the successes is, is, is important as well. So I think mapping um, inquiry-based learning in the curriculum raises all these challenges. And a lot of them are not directly um, curriculum content challenges. It, so curriculum mapping becomes broader um, than just the content of the curriculum. So, um, so throughout the process of um, working with schools and helping them develop their curriculum, um, I've kind of created this concept uh, of, uh, of dynamic curriculum principles, which we design our system against, or school, we can, we can evaluate a school system against. But what is the idea? What is a dynamic curriculum? Well, basically, if you, if you, the way I think about it really is that every curriculum in a school is dynamic, whether it's written down in stone or not. Um, there are external forces shaping it. So it might be exam boards changing what you need to teach. It could be uh, um, you know, um, government um, bodies, the Department of Education putting new requirements in. It could be, um, it could be the, the world at large changing, um, changing the, the, the landscape of, of what's happening. Um, so there are external forces that are moving and shaping the curriculum. And then there are internal forces. So you might have new teachers who, who, who are developing new things. Teachers are developing new um, new ways of teaching their lessons. You might have school improvement plans, and the pupils themselves have different needs over time. So a curriculum is inherently um, dynamic, um, and if if the if the written curriculum um, does not reflect that, then it will pretty quickly be out of date and not not be very useful. But the more fundamental challenge is, well, if we've got all this movement, um, what shape is our is all this movement shaping our curriculum towards, uh, and what shape do we want it to be towards? So if we can harness a dynamic curriculum and all this movement, we can move our curriculum towards a shape, a better shape, the optimal shape that, that reflects the vision for our school. If we don't do that, then these external forces and internal forces will shape our curriculum and it might not be the shape we want. So a dynamic curriculum is, is a concept that I think is important, um, but, but then you, you, it raises the question, well, well how do we actually um, uh, adapt to that? So, so that we just kind of looked at the question, what is your school's curriculum? And, and quite clearly, it's not just a, a pile of documents. It's not just a static snapshot of your of your curriculum. It's not it's not just content. Um, you've got the unit plans and lesson plans. Um, but beyond that, you've got the vision. So that should be considered as part of your curriculum. So the vision, the, the mission and values, your school's teaching brand. Um, and then you have a process. So whether it's an inquiry based process or some other process. Um, and um, the, you also have a system, and a system is intrinsically part of your curriculum. Um, and again, whether that's a conscious decision or not, it's having an impact on, on how your curriculum um, works and how it develops um, and how people interact with the curriculum. So your school's curriculum is, is, is all these different things. But what do we mean by a system? So from, from, um, from our perspective, uh, what we mean by that is you have a you design the system 
Um, that might be, again, it might be intentional. It might be that you've just got a system that designs you. Um, but hopefully, if you're designing it, then it reflects your, your vision. So the vision and the content of your curriculum go into the system. And the ultimate aim for a system should be this, and I, I really like this sentence. It should be to create a curriculum environment that naturally brings about your desired changes. So if you're, you want your school to be more integrated, to integrate in core based learning more effectively, then if you can create a curriculum environment that naturally brings that about, you'll get the changes you want. Um, and I think it's important to understand that if you ignore the system in this, then you might create an environment that doesn't create desired changes. And what are those changes going to be? So um, to help evaluate um, whether a system is, is uh, engaging and developing a dynamic curriculum, um, we came up with uh, a set of dynamic curriculum principles. Um, I'm, I've, I've, I've done a, a separate webinar on this, which I, I, so I won't go into this in detail now, but if you want to have access to that, if you drop me an email, um, I can send you a link to, to view this. So this is a way of, of establishing whether your, uh, your curriculum system is dynamic or not. So can it be viewed from different pers perspectives? Is there continuous improvement? Is it interconnected both in, you know, across the curriculum and, and the different parts of the community, uh, which is the next step? Um, is it unique to your school? Does it reflect your school's mission and values and your school's brand? Um, does it support your school's preferred pedagogy? And obviously, if your school uh, is an inquiry-based school, then it would need to support that. Um, does it provide real-time insight? So is it up-to-date? Is it constantly evolving and, and, and um, showing everyone the latest picture? And does it give you a way to showcase your school's curriculum and your story? So um, what, what I'm going to, I'm just going to focus on one aspect of, of a dynamic curriculum. Um, and that's, can your curriculum be viewed from different perspectives? I'm going to map that back to the different stages of a journey uh, in an inquiry-based learning. So I want to emphasize the word um, viewed because um, I think that, that, that well, uh, I'll show you what I mean by that. So, so these are the different um, uh, sort of steps on the journey to um, an, an inquiry-focused, inquiry-based um, school curriculum. So if we start with thinking about the skills, so this is a visual way of representing a school's curriculum. You've got the kind of um, the, the different um, subjects that, and the departments and subjects that your school has across the top, and you've got the different years there. And then each rectangle represents an individual unit of teaching. So this is a map of a school's uh, curriculum. This is this is actually the Mondrian Wall, um, the product that I mentioned. Um, but you know, it's, 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 there might be other ways in which you can create a map. But this gives you so you, so this gives you one way of creating a map of, of your curriculum. And each of these little rectangles, you can um, interact with them and, and, and have some detail behind that as well. So you want those two things to be connected. You want the detail of your curriculum to automatically build up that bigger picture. You don't want to have to change a big picture every time the, the detail is updated. Um, but what um, we do with Wandering Wall, and, and what, once you've got a map, what you can do then is you can start to track a, uh, a set of skills or a framework against those units. So once you've got a curriculum, you can then say, well, what, whereabouts do these skills uh, appear? And um, in, in the Mondrian Wall, um, it automatically allows you to kind of tag um, these units with the different skills. So it, it could be any of the skills that, that we mentioned um, previously. If, if you're trying to map skills from age three to 18, um, then you, you, know, you, need a, you need a tool to help you sort of manage that automatically, because it's not realistic to do this kind of thing manually. Um, so the unit details includes um, that kind of mapping of the of, of the details. So that's so that's one way of of of, um, of of solving those problems around the skills phase. But then um, you get to the process. So your curriculum system can have mechanisms to help you um, solve the problems around um, the process of a of, of inquiry based learning. So in in this case, the the each unit um, has got a focus on uh, a particular, the, the colours represent uh, a particular stage in a learning process. So um, for, for the fossil cycle, for example, each colour could represent um, connect, wander and, and, and so on. And, um, and then you can ask, start asking questions like, um, where, how, how are these individual aspects of our process distributed across the school? So at any point in the horizontal experience that a pupil has, are they experiencing all the different stages of, of the process? Um, and you can also start to make sense of are the links and the sequencing 
of, of units that have a focus on an individual process. Does that make sense as well? Um, and part of the process is also engaging the pedagogy. So when you're asking teachers to reflect on um, aspects of the curriculum, the questions that you ask them um, to, to kind of complete, um, they can shape teacher thinking and they can capture the thinking they've already done. So it gives you an opportunity to move things forward. So capturing the process means having a, some structural elements in your, in your curriculum system that allow you to, 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 to measure and check on progress and coverage for, uh, for the process and the sequencing. Um, but then within individual units of teaching, uh, it's important to check the depth of thinking that the teachers have put into um, the, uh, uh, the process of, of inquiry-based learning in, in that part of the curriculum. And if, they, if they're struggling to express it, then perhaps they need more support and more time um, to do that. Um, so that's the kind of process side. Um, then you get to um, the perspective of a stance. And as we said before, that, that's where you're starting to say, well, well um, we need to engage with the mission values of the school. We need to make sure all the school leadership is involved. But we're talking about another level of cultural change. One of the challenges um, is, imagine here's a, a, a curriculum that's got um, a kind of skills focus represented by these colours. There are other things going on in the school. So uh, there's assessment for learning um, uh, agendas, there's SMSC, there's all sorts of, you know, there's all sorts of different um, agendas that might be um, going on. You've got, you might be looking at the, the school from the point of view of STEM or EBAC or, 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 or whatever. So there's a lot of distractions. And if, you, if you're not able to find a way to get inquiry-based learning to be, uh, to stand out and, and, and to, 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 you know, nudge, it, nudge its shoulders to kind of like to, um, have room to breathe within those things, um, then, um, then then you're going to have a challenge. But your system needs to reflect that there's other things going on, not just inquiry-based um, learning that need to be managed and need to be developed and, and, and tracked and, and thought about carefully. So when it comes to the question, you know, can your curriculum be viewed from different perspectives? Um, for each of the 7.5 standard curriculum principles, we develop some questions. So can you visualize your curriculum? Is your curriculum system interactive? Um, can you integrate strategic and tactical views of your curriculum? So all these things apply to thinking about how you're using, uh, how you're mapping inquiry-based learning um, in your school. Does your system promote a unit level view? Um, so the, the, the unit level view meaning, um, are you able to look at chunks of, of, of the curriculum in the school at a, at a level at which it's meaningful to talk about the process, uh, an inquiry process? or uh, or, or you've got, is it all just focused on individual learning experiences and, and individual lessons? So you need to be able to take a slight step back in order to look at the bigger picture. Um, and can you look at it from different perspectives? So if you if you design your curriculum system to only show you the curriculum from one perspective, from, even if it's in, in core based learning, then you're going to struggle because you need to be able to look at it from different perspectives to solve all the problems and, and get the jigsaw to, to fit together. So when we look at it from different perspectives, just in a bit more detail, you've got strategic, tactical, horizontal, and vertical plans. You've got the different programs that your school might be subscribed to. You've got different themes. Um, and then you've got the perspective of the learners and the temporal perspective. So how, how does this look at different times? And I think the, uh, the stance is one of the, the, the biggest challenges because um, it's about getting everybody together on the same page, everyone rowing in the, in the same direction. And with a dynamic curriculum system, sometimes you can you can look at the impact of that and say, well, is the language that our teacher is using reflective of the, the, the kind of culture um, of our school? And what we have sometimes do with schools is look at we can you can look at the language that teachers are using to express the curriculum and see is the hidden curriculum as exposed by the language they're using consistent with what we want that school um, to be. And we work with schools when they thought they had they'd engaged pupils. Um, with a really kind of process driven approach or really vision, mission values. But then when they looked at the language they were using in the description of the curriculum, it was perhaps much too focused on um, exams and academic you know, and, 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 the, and the kinds of things that might just might, might not reflect those values. So the stance is, is quite is quite is quite a challenge. There's a, there's a lot individual um, champions of inquiry based learning can do by themselves. But um, to really get to the depths of mapping a curriculum, um, 
there's quite a lot more that that, that needs to be engaged. Um, but I think that's where the inquiries come in, because if you're looking at um, the benefits to the inquiries, that should motivate all the different stakeholders to, 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 to want to be a part of that and want to make changes that support that. So this is looking at the curriculum from um, an individual perspective. So can we look at it? So that what, what does the curriculum look like in year seven for an individual um, pupil? But then also um, what's interesting is, is what are the outcomes? So I, I said earlier, one of the challenges is defining success in terms of learner outcomes, learner impact. So when a young person reflects on their educational identity, is, is, is inquiry-based inquiry learning, can you see the impact of that? Um, so when they're reflecting on their, their, their learning or their, the things they're interested in, are you able to identify the strengths and weaknesses of individual pupils by seeing where they're able to express um, their educational identity in those areas? Um, and Jenny mentioned some interesting examples where pupils needed some support in some of those key areas. Um, so the, um, so that, that kind of process um, that I think a school might need to go through from skills process stance back down to, to inquirers. Um, it's really neat to, to, to map a curriculum successfully. You need different skills, you need different approaches at different levels. Um, so maybe if you're in, in your school and you can think, well, where about is our school on this, on this journey? Are we at the skill stage or at the process uh, stage or at the stance? And, and you can say, well, there's no point trying to get everything in place um, if we need to work with stages, or you can you know, have a little bit of success in each area. Um, you, can, you don't have to take this journey in, in, this, in, this, uh, in, in this order. Um, you don't have to, you can do it all at once in a way. Um, but um, it's useful, I think, to identify the different challenges. And I think for me, the, the greatest um, kind of, uh, w w when you go on that journey, what, 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 what comes out of it is that the, the real benefit um, to mapping the curriculum um, in terms of uh, inquiry-based learning is that it, it leads to the, pe the person doing the mapping um, leading to kind of personal reflection about their own um, learning style, their own teaching style. If you think of constructivism, before you can teach something, you've got to be able to understand it yourself. And if you're thinking it through, then then it naturally leads to conversations around, well, well you know, how do I approach inquiry learning? And again, um, in Jenny's talk, she talked about she always looks at those different feelings. She, she recognizes those feelings she goes through as you go through an inquiry process. So, in um, in, the, in one of the in a recent conversation. Um, I had with with Daryl, we were talking about that 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 that, that next step of the journey of, of, of focusing on on inquirers, and I was thinking about how that adapts to how, how we can adapt our systems and and bring our systems together to support schools in doing that. But that led me to really start thinking about my own inquiry based skills, my own um, think, approach to learning, and I was kind of thinking, well, which of these areas am I good at? Are there any areas where I'm consistently uh, performing uh, well? Are, are, and and maybe. On the flip side of that, that strength, there's a weakness that I can develop and, and go back to that kind of personal development. So, um, so I think that that mapping inquiry-based learning is as beneficial to the people doing the mapping as it is to uh, the pupils and to the curriculum um, itself. So, going back to my um, my kind of uh, uh, the things I mentioned at the start. Um, that, that kind of look, taking a step back and thinking about my own learning made me think, well, wait a minute, the, the being an ideas person and solving problems um, helps me contribute because I can help build systems that help schools map um, the curriculum, develop educational identity and, and look at how they're doing tracking and monitoring. Um, my interest in learning means that I'm uh, drawn to education and, 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 and schools. And personal development um, means I'm, I'm, when, I, when I engage with schools, I'm naturally thinking about their mission and, and values. And being a contrarian is not always doesn't just mean you have arguments with people, and I try not to. Um, it may, hopefully it means that the positive side of that is maybe I bring some new perspectives um, to systems and the process of, of, of mapping a curriculum, and hopefully that that's reflected in um, the Mondrian Wall. So um, overall, um, the, my kind of conclusion um, on, on on reflection and looking at this journey that that I've seen um, and Daryl and, and, and Fossil as as a, as a kind of movement take shape is I think that ma mapping inquiry-based learning in a dynamic curriculum is not an admin job and, and it would be a mistake to define it as that. I think it's much more beneficial than that. I think it's actually um, a gift to a school and I've certainly had, found um, individually uh, benefits and I've seen um, benefits for, for, for pupils and for schools um, to, to be able to say that I think it benefits you and your whole school community. 
So I'm very grateful to um, be a part, to, to be hopefully to contribute and be a small part of, of helping some schools and, and working with Daryl and Jenny to try and um, uh, promote and support inquiry-based learning. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, so uh, that's kind of uh, my story. And if, if any of you have got any questions or would like to any more, um, uh, uh, I'll, I'll happy to answer questions. Uh, if you if you want to, to find out more about dynamic curriculum principles, you can download the webinar. I've got my email address there if you if you'd like to get in contact and uh, request anything. So um, yes, uh, is that okay, Dow? Is that have you got any yeah. questions or? Well, what I thought just to to wrap things up um, and then just to see if there's anybody who has anything um, immediate um, to respond on, um, but really what I why I was very pleased that Kevin was able to share something of the work that we've been doing together um, is because we've been speaking about um, the library is born out of inquiry and the library is home to inquiry. Um, so if we think about subjects um, in schools as um, branches of knowledge and the collection that we have as the record of knowledge in those branches, of knowledge, um, then at, in, in a sense, at the most fundamental level, our collection ought to reflect the curriculum. The, the, the curriculum ought to be reflected in our collections. So, the, so our collections need to um, support the curriculum and they need to extend the curriculum. Um, and what is really exciting is the work that Kevin's been doing for a really long time and what um, drew me to him at the outset is that he's been thinking about this for a long time and developed a very powerful tool that allows us um, to begin to talk about the curriculum in a very powerful way um, and is another way for us to begin to make the library and the role of the library and the librarian integral to an educational process. Um, because we're not thinking about the collection in terms of resources. We're not thinking about it in terms of books or online resources. We're, talk, we're thinking about the, um, the collection in terms of knowledge and our role in enabling teachers and, and particularly students um, to access that knowledge and to make that knowledge their own and to contribute to that. Um, but of course, it 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 not very easy in um, under forty five minutes to uh, share much of that. So I hope Kevin has given you something to think about, and certainly um, for myself um, or for for Kevin, uh, and also to create a topic in the Fossil Group Forum about curricular mapping and and particularly direct dynamic curricular mapping and inquiry based learning. There's an invitation. Um, for colleagues to join in um, and to shape the ongoing development of, of this tool. So I don't know if there's anybody who has something for Kevin while he's here um, that you'd like to comment on or ask about. Yeah, I think uh, much food for thought. And uh, yeah, it's been, a, it's been a long two days. <laughs> yeah. Um, so and so all of the recordings will be made available and all of the presentations will be available along with the recordings as well as an invitation um, to journey together. So thanks very much, Kevin. Really do appreciate that. And for all of those colleagues who who, who joined us online, um, it was an absolute pleasure to have your company over the last two days. Uh, and we wish you well on your individual journeys. And uh, yeah, take care.